Hi and welcome to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to play with new products. I did share a couple of projects the last two weeks where I was shopping my stash, but it's time to have some fun with new releases and this is the latest release by my friend Marlene. You know that I absolutely love her style, her products are always so unique and I'm going to go really quickly through some of them so you can get an idea of the release and you will find links down below to the whole release where you can check it out. The release is called Out of This World and it's all about space. You will find moon, stars, planets, aliens, UFOs. You will find fun robots that you can build up. There are stamps with Marlene's unique designs and their sizes are great not only for art journaling but also for card making. And check out that flamingo in the UFO. Lots and lots of robots, so much fun, bigger and smaller. Here's another stamp set that I absolutely love, that girl on the moon. And that's where I got the inspiration for today's project actually, but I'm not going to use this stamp set. And how about those space cuts? Absolutely darling. So anyway, in this collection you will also find pattern paper, you will find collage paper and there is also a block of die cuts that we all love to use. There is a link down below if you want to check out the collection and choose your favorites. There are also lovely stencils, I will be using one of them for today. But there is also another collection by Marlene which is called Essentials and when you see something labeled with that name then you know that this doesn't go discontinued. These type of products are quite generic in uh, design so you can use them again and again in, uh, throughout the year and you can combine them with the current collections but uh, if you find them out of stock you know for sure that they are going to restock. But my most favorite product that Marlene came up with are the new acrylic paints. Lovely vibrant colors. There are 24 available at the moment and you can get them in sets of 6 or you can get them individually. Just pick your favorite colors. They have a fine tip. Its bottle contains 28 ml of product. This is acrylic paint. It's going to dry permanent. And it has a satin finish, it's not glossy. You will see them in action in today's project. Don't pay attention at the white packaging. Yours is going to come with lovely colors and uh, the logo of Art by Marilla and Studio Light. So let's start with today's project. I have a loose page today. This is about 8x8 and it is thick watercolor paper. I'm going to start by applying my background, the first layer, and uh, I'm using the new acrylic paint so you can see them in action. The fine tip gives control on how much paint you want to use. You can even write with them directly on top of your project if you want to. Now the packaging, the tube, allows for the paint to stay wet for longer time just because it doesn't allow air to go inside the bottle. So you will have them for a long, long time. The color I'm using here is azure, a lovely blue color, and I'm applying it with a little bit of water. The more water you use with your brush, the more diluted the color will be, and it's going to look like a color wash. You can always go ahead and prepare your pages by applying some gesso, then you will be able to cover up bigger areas with less color. I'm drying quickly the first layer, and then I will use the same color and deepen it up a little bit in some areas. To do that I'm adding a dot of black as well. So I'm mixing up those two colors and you can see I get the shade slightly darker. This way I will end up having some variation on my background with lighter and darker areas. Nothing is going to look flat and again I'm going to use my heat can to quickly dry it. So now it's time to play with a stencil. This is from the latest release and this time I'm going with black. The black by the way is called peach and a purple color. And this one is called Punk and it's from the Neon Colors. I happen to have one of those brushes which are perfect for stencils. If you don't have such a brush, you can always use your brush or even a foam blending tool. Just make sure that you don't load it up with too much of the color. Now I'm going over the stencil and I did secure that with some tape underneath so that it's not going to move on me. You can tap 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 all over the stencil with the acrylic paint just making sure that you don't add too much so that it's going to seep underneath the stencil. Notice that I pick up both colors, purple and black, at the same time. So I kind of blending them as I go. 
I'm going to cover up completely the whole stencil. Let's lift the stencil to see what we have. And is that stencil just gorgeous? I absolutely love the numbers. There is another one with letters instead of numbers. And if you follow my videos, you pretty much know what I'm going to do. I like to have a darker edge. So I'm just using what's left on my blending brush here. And I'm going all around to make it look darker at the edges. This is going to make the center lighten up somehow as if it is glowing. And this is a great example on how we can do techniques with what we have. You can see here I'm doing blending with acrylic paint. I don't need an ink pad for that. You can see here the properties of acrylic paint as I catch the light. It's not glossy, it's not matte. It has that lovely satin finish, which I absolutely love in acrylic paints. And there are more things to love about these paints. These are produced in EU. They are top quality acrylic paint, plus they are eco-friendly. They are non-toxic and you can find all of this info if you check Marlene's Facebook Live where she introduced these paints. Now this background is supposed to be the space, a mixed media space with numbers. So I have to add some splashes. These are going to work as stars. And of course I have to do some stamping on my background. For that I'm using one of the essential stamp sets. This is the one that has the alphabet written again and again. I'm going to use just a part of it. I'm not going to cover up completely the whole thing. That's how I usually do my stamping. I'm using black archival link here, so everything I have up to now on my project is permanent since I used acrylic paints and now archival link. So nothing is going to smudge or smear. And because I'm never happy with the splashes, I'm adding a few purple ones again using that pink color that I used for the background. I'm happy with my background, I will leave that aside to dry and I will work on the focal points. These are the ties that are going to give me lots and lots of elements to build up my scene. The idea is to have a little girl on top of that moon. I love the size of the moon, it is nice and big so it creates a lovely focal point for an art journal. And there are also two dies for that so you can add some extra dimension. I am going to die cut everything from thick watercolor paper and I will also use the circle, the smaller and the bigger one, as well as that die up there that cuts out lots and lots of stars and that uh, hanging heart and the hanging star. I'm going to use my acrylic paint to color everything. If you want, you can just use pattern paper to cut out all of these shapes or you can use colored cardstock. And you can see here the two layers of the moon. You can just use one of them if you want. You can color them differently and then stack one on top of the other. However, I decided to stack them from the beginning together just to add some texture on an otherwise flat moon. And I'm playing with the placement, trying to decide how it's going to look better. Now this is where I decide how my page is going to look at the end. So I'm just playing with the different bits and pieces and auditioning them. You can leave just the moon there. I wanted to add even more color, so I'm going to add the two circles being planets. And so let's add some color on our focal points. I am using my white glue to stick one layer of the moon on top of the other. Again, remember you can use those dies to cut out pattern papers and stack one on top of the other with different colors. However, I'm going to use it as a whole, as one element. Then to color my moon, I'm going to combine yellow and orange. The orange is going to give me the shade that I need to make it look round and more dimensional. So just cover up the whole thing with yellow and then dip your brush in a little bit of orange and add it on only one side of the moon. If you work fairly quickly and you have a little bit of water on your brush, then these colors are going to blend nicely together directly on your paper. And you see you will end up with a lovely blended look. Now that I have some yellow on my brush, I'm going to color the little star, the hanging star. Again, I'm going to add a touch of orange just to make it look dimensional. I don't want anything to look flat. And since I always like to have the same look and feel on my elements as the look and feel on my background, 
I'm going to use the same text stamp that I used for the background and do some stamping along the moon. Again, I'm not going to cover it up completely. And this time, because I don't want to have any vibrant color there, I'm not using black archival ink. I went through my stars and tried to find a color that looks like the orange of the moon. So it is visible, but it's not overwhelming. Now for coloring my planets, I'm going to repeat the same technique using two different shades of color. For one of them I'm going with pink, for the other one I went with uh, uh, green shades. So apply a lighter color all over your planet and then with a darker one create the shadows. For my focal point I decided to go with this adorable girl. Now she is from the Sending You Love stamp set. In the same stamp set you will find a mermaid, maybe a space mermaid, I don't know. You will also find clouds and planets, so you can combine her with the elements that are already in the stamp set if you don't want to get the, the moon. I'm using alcohol friendly ink to stamp her since I'm planning to use my alcohol markers, but you can go ahead and color it with watercolors, with pencils, with alcohol markers or even with acrylic paint. But if you do use acrylic paint, you may go over the line, the black lines and cover them up. However, if you don't remove your stamp from the misty, you can go ahead and color your uh, image with acrylic paints and even if you go over the black lines, it's no problem since you can always put that back into your misty and stamp again directly on top. So anyway, I'm going to do the whole coloring here and fuzzy cut here with my scissors. I was debating with myself on the color of her dress, I decided to go with red. You will see later on that once I place it on top of the page, it's going to look quite pale. But that's not a problem, we can always work with what we have, you will see what I'm going to do as a last minute fix. So I have all my elements ready to go, I like to go around the edges with a black marker. This covers up completely the white edge, it makes the fuzzy cutting look perfect and it kind of outlines the elements. So now I'm just playing around with my elements, trying to decide where they're going to look better on top of my page. And once I'm happy, I can go ahead and stick everything down. And don't you just love how vibrant those colors are? I'm absolutely happy with the vibrancy of acrylic paints by Art by Marlene. Now I'm using my white glue to stick everything down just because that's what I had on my table at the moment. For this step you can absolutely use any type of glue that you have, even matte medium. Remember everything underneath is uh, permanent since we used acrylic paints. So no matter what you do on top of it, it's not going to smudge or smear. It is mess free for sure. Now after sticking everything down, I'm using my scissors to cut off any excess paper that I have. And remember how I did some stamping on the moon? I forgot to do that on my planets. So I'm going to do that again trying to use an um, ink pad which is close, a color of ink pad which is close to the color of uh, the planet. This is going to add some extra visual texture and it is going to make it as part of the whole page. It's a part of my tips and tricks to make all the elements come together by having the same look and feel. Now I do have those stars that I die cut in the beginning and I'm just sticking them around the moon and the planets so they look as if they are glowing. I absolutely love this look and I think that I am going to use those stars in more pages in the future. I just love the effect. And now this is where I'm not happy with the red, I want it to be more vibrant, so I'm going with another marker and being very very careful, since I'm almost done, I'm going over her dress to make it look more vibrant. And I think it looks better this way. I also grabbed a black marker and I'm going around the planets and the moon. This is a very fine tip marker. The line isn't too visible, but at the same time it kind of outlines the elements. And uh, the lines are very sketchy. I don't go for the perfect line there. I did add some highlights with my white gel pen in some areas and now I'm going to bring in my booklet with sentiments. This is from the Essential Collection and I found one that says if you feel like you don't fit into this world, 
Create a new one, and I think it is perfect for this layout. I always like to cut out the phrases in smaller pieces. This way I have more flexibility on where and how I want to put them on the page, rather than having a super big line of phrase. And then I like to go around them with a thin black marker, just to outline them a little bit more. Now the way the girl is designed looks as if she's blowing some kisses, that's why I'm going to stick three tiny little hearts. And uh, I am in that phase of the layout where I can go ahead and add uh, little details forever. So uh, that's me adding little hearts, then I'm going to add some gems to embellish her crown. And you can go on with doodling and highlights, just having fun with what I created. If you love working on loose papers instead of working directly inside an art journal, then when you finish you can glue it inside an album or a spiral binded book like I'm doing here. Or you can always punch holes on one side and use the disc bound system. And that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired as I was playing with a new collection by Art by Marlene. Don't forget to like the video and leave me a comment down below, I always love reading them. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.